Hi, welcome to GTEC Techno Solution Private Limited. Now we are going to see about the thermal power plant and its interview tips. So the first question is, what are the main circuits in the thermal power plant? So the thermal power plant consists of four main circuits. They are feed water and stream flow circuit. The second one is coal and ash circuit. The third one is air and gas circuit. And the final one is cooling water circuit. So these are considered to be the circuits in the thermal power plant. So we got the next question. Steam power plant works on which cycle? So the answer is Steam power plant works on the principle of Rankine cycle. We'll move on to the next question. What is the thermal efficiency of steam power plant? The answer is the thermal efficiency of steam power plant is defined as the ratio of heat equivalent of mechanical energy transmitted to the turbine shaft to the heat of combustion. Apart from that, generally in terms of the thermal efficiency of a steam power plant, it will be having a range of 30 to 35 percentage. Well, we'll move to the next question. What is the overall efficiency of the thermal power plant or we can say it as the steam power plant? The overall efficiency of the system is said to be defined as the ratio of heat equivalent of the electrical output to the heat of combustion. Generally, the overall efficiency of the steam power plant tends to be always be less than the thermal efficiency of the steam plant. It will be of the order 29 to 33 percentage so you can see here the thermal efficiency of steam power plant and how it's going to be worked on we'll move to the next question why the thermal efficiency of the steam power plant is quite low the answer is in terms of the steam power station more than 50 percentage of the total heat of combustion is lost as the heat rejected to the condenser and the loss is unavoidable as the heat energy cannot be converted into mechanical energy without a drop in temperature. Other than this, steam in the condenser is at the lowest temperature. So this is the reason that the thermal efficiency of the power plant is quite low. We got the next question on what factors that is in terms of thermal efficiency of the steam power plant depends. The efficiency of the thermal plant depends on the following factors. They are the first one is all about the pressure of steam entering the turbine. The next factor is temperature of the steam entering the turbine. The third one is all about the pressure in the condenser. And the final one is the thermal efficiency increases with increase in temperature and pressure of the steam entering the turbine. We'll move on to the next question. Why the thermal power plants are always situated by the side of rivers or lakes? The reason behind this question is that thermal power plants are situated close to the rivers or lakes because to meet the large quantity of the water requirement you can see the depiction of the thermal power plants situated in lakeside the water is required in the steam power plants in the boiler for the following purpose the purposes are in order to have the cooling purpose such as in terms of condenser and as carrying medium as in terms of the deposit of the deposit of ash and also for the purpose of drinking. So these are considered to be some of the following purpose where water is required in this steam power plant in terms of a boiler. We'll move to the next question. 
What is the purpose of D aerator in steam power plant? The presence of dissolved gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide in water makes the water corrosive as they react with metal and forms iron oxide. The purpose of the D aerator is to reduce the dissolved oxygen content in the condensate that is nothing but the feed water thereby increasing its temperature. So this is all about the purpose of D aerator in the steam power plant. We got the next question. Why are the feed water heaters used? You can see the feed water heater over here. Regenerative feed water heaters are employed in the steam power plants in order to improve the cycle efficiency. Also it increases the steam flow rate and reduces the steam flow to the condenser. They rise the temperature of the feed water before it enters the economizer. So this is the reason behind the usage of the feed water heater. We got the next question over here. What are the major electric systems in thermal power plant? So the major electrical equipment that is deployed in the thermal power plant are the turbine generator, exciter system, generator protection system, generator transformer, high tension, low tension switch gear and the final one is electrical switch yard. So these are considered to be the major electric systems in thermal power plant. We got the next question. What are the different generator productions employed in thermal power plants? So the different generator productions employed in thermal power plants are faults in the windings, overload protection, Overheating of windings or bearings, overspeed protection, a loss of excitation protection, motoring operation protection, and the final one as single phase or unbalanced current protection, out of step operation protection, subsynchronous oscillation protections, and the earth fall protection. So, these are the different generator productions employed in thermal power plants. We'll move to the next question. How generator transformer is cooled in the thermal power plant? So the answer is machine vision applications that is called as MVA. So the machine vision applications that is MVA power rating of the generator transformer will be equal to the alternator. So the main reason behind the thing of cooling the thermal power plant is all about the oil forced, air forced type of cooling. So this type of cooling is employed for generator transformer. Hence the loss, hence the lot of heat will be generated while generator transformer is under operation. We'll move on to the next question. What are the different types of circuit breakers employed in thermal power plant? In terms of the low voltage operation, 451-220 volt vacuum circuit breakers or air brake circuit breakers are employed. For voltage rating, it will be about 6.6 .6 kV and beyond SF6 circuit breakers are employed. Here we go with the next question. What type of cooling is provided for generator in power plants? Hydrogen gas cooling is employed for large size generators because of the reason is that better heat carrying ability of the hydrogen. And also the hydrogen cooling is provided for 
rotors and core of the generator water cooling is provided for the stator of the alternator so the type of cooling are nothing but hydrogen gas cooling hydrogen cooling and water cooling here we go with the next question what are the different auxiliary systems in the thermal power plant so the different auxiliary systems in thermal power plant are as follows the first one is cold handling and storage the next one is the cold pulverizes water treatment plant and the next one is steam boiler then comes draught systems then comes the ash handling systems after that the steam turbine next comes the circulation water system followed by the electrical systems after that the control and instrumentation followed by the pollution control equipment and with the final one of fire protection system so these are the different auxiliary systems we got the next question what is the purpose of pulverizer So the answer is pulverizer serves two purpose that is to drive the coal and to grind the coal they crush the coal to size of 74 microns different types of pulverizers available are ball tube mill ring door mill hammer mill and the attrition type mill We'll move on to the next question. What are the different types of steam boilers used in thermal power plants? The different types of boilers are fire tube boiler, water tube boiler, natural circulation boiler, forced circulation boiler and once through boiler. So these are the different types of steam boilers used in thermal power plants we'll move on to the next question what is cavitation and disadvantages of cavitation the formation of air bubbles and water vapor on the water surface due to the reduction in the pressure is called as cavitation when the pressure on the water reduces below the saturation pressure corresponding to the temperature of the water the rapid formation of the water vapor and the air bubbles will be there so the rapid formation and collapsing of bubbles causes the pitting of the metal surface this is considered to be the disadvantage of cavitation we got the next question what is the largest pump in the thermal power plant So in terms of thermal power plant that is the thermal power plant boiler feed pump which is called as BFP that is boiler feed pump this is considered to be the largest pump since it delivers the water to the boiler so you can see here the depiction of boiler feed pump over here we'll move to the next question why the reason efficiency in thermal power plant is low almost 50 percentage of the heat generated is getting to be lost at the condenser as the heat rejection it is unavoidable as without heat rejection it is not possible to convert the heat energy into mechanical energy and that drives the turbine without drop in temperature thus the efficiency of the thermal power plant is between 30 to 35 percentage so the next question is what are the different circuits in thermal power plant the major circuits available in thermal power plant is coal ash circuit air and gas circuit cooling water circuit and feed water and steam flow circuit
we'll move on to the next question how efficiency of thermal plant can be improved it can be improved by increasing the temperature and pressure of the steam entering the turbine and also by reducing the pressure in the condenser and also by reheating the steam between different stages of turbine let's talk about the advantages of thermal power plant so the advantages are thermal power plants can be operated near the load centers unlike hydro and nuclear plants and the next advantage is that it requires less space compared to the hydro plants and the cost of construction is said to be less the thermal power plant can be able to handle overload for certain time period so this is considered to be the advantages of thermal power plant let's move to the next question so we'll talk about the disadvantages of thermal power plant it emits greenhouse gases and it causes pollution coal and ash handling requires large area the efficiency is said to be very low so these are considered to be some of the disadvantages of thermal power plant we'll move on to the next question what is a wind farm the region where large number of windmills is erected to produce electricity is called as wind farm you can see over here the wind farm which is depicted clearly here we got the next question name the constituent elements present in coal the constituent element present in coal are carbon hydrogen oxygen and also some amount of sulfur and nitrogen that are present in coal we have the next question what is the principle involved in the working of thermal power plant in terms of a thermal power station coal is burnt in a boiler and water in the boiler is going to be converted to steam so this is said to be the first and foremost steam which is involved in the working of thermal power plant steam under high pressure is directed onto a turbine and to turn the turbine shaft so this shaft which is connected to an electrical generator produces electricity as it turns so this is the overall principle which is going to be involved in the working of thermal power plant we'll move to the next question what is the energy conversion involved in a thermal power plant in a thermal power plant if we see the chemical energy that is stored in fossil fuels or radioactive substances as getting to be converted successively into thermal energy mechanical energy and finally to electrical energy so this is the energy conversion phenomenon which is there involved in the thermal power plant hope you got an idea thank you for watching a gtech video